Welcome back to this special edition of This Week in Space. If you know anything about the space business, you know NASA has never built a rocket on its own. It's always had commercial players. So when the agency talks about moving into the commercial realm, what it's really talking about is moving towards smaller, entrepreneurial, more nimble companies that don't operate on a cost-plus basis. I caught up with one of the industry leaders this past week, Brett Alexander. Brett Alexander, President of the Commercial Space Flight Federation, thanks for uh, joining us on This My Week pleasure. in Space. Um, this is a big day for you guys, a significant change. Uh, first of all, what's the reaction? Uh, it's an overwhelmingly positive reaction, certainly from the entrepreneurial space community uh, and, and those uh, in more traditional aerospace industry that are, are commercial leaning or more forward leaning. What's to say that uh, the commercial players can do it better, faster, cheaper? Well, number one, we're talking about doing a different mission. We're talking about going to the space station. So we're talking about a mission similar to what Gemini did 40 years ago. Uh, so it's not as complex as going to the moon or going beyond. The spacecraft is simpler so we can do it faster. Had NASA been focused on that before, we would probably have that capability now. What this paradigm shift really is about is about NASA going back to its roots to develop R&D for those critical enabling technologies to go beyond low Earth orbit, but for the private sector to pick up actually the service pro provision of t taking astronauts to the space station. Now we've been talking about the private sector and this you know, so-called burgeoning commercial space um, business for a very long time now, and yet it never has come of age. Is this what it takes to, to put it over the top? Absolutely. I mean, government is always, was always going to be the anchor tenant for something like this. With government, with NASA uh, throwing all of its uh, weight behind it, this is what it'll take to, to really take off. Help me understand, because NASA has never built its own rockets. It's always right. used a, a contractor of some kind, just the more traditional defense t contractor types. Right. What's the difference between that model and what is going to happen now? Fundamentally, it's a different contracting paradigm, as you said. Uh, but in, in the traditional way of doing things, NASA not only set the requirements, but was involved in absolutely every decision that's made on every little thing all the way through the program. Uh, programs tended to stretch out and tended to cost more. In this sense, uh, in, in the new paradigm with commercial companies and commercial efforts, NASA will set the requirements, NASA will be there to provide reviews and to verify that, that things are done the right way and that there is safety, but they won't be involved as much on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's a real paradigm shift in oversight versus insight uh, and how things are done. There's going to be a fight in Congress, obviously, over this. There's a lot of people with, um, you know, who have um, uh, legislative interests, constituent interests in all this. Senator Shelby says this is the death march for uh, space flight in the United States. How do you respond to that? Well, I think there's been a lot of hyperbole on, on, on all sides, if you will. I think the, the reality is that the budget that the, the president has outlined here has a lot of activity for development for R&D at Marshall Space Flight Center, at Kennedy Space Flight Center, at uh, Johnson Space Center. And so there's, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of money. The money is going up by $6 billion over the next five years for all of NASA. Money equals jobs, so the number of jobs are going up. On the commercial space flight side, the $6 billion program will actually bring in more jobs uh, than otherwise if it was a government program because it'll leverage private investment uh, to be able to go after commercial markets. So it's a bigger pie for so this, everybody. So this is the real beginning of commercial space, you think? I really think so. I think the first beginning was the COTS cargo program, and I think the commercial crew program cements that. Brett Alexander, thanks very much. Thank you. The outcome was further cemented by the findings of a blue ribbon panel that took a look at NASA's future spaceflight plans over this past summer. Headed by aerospace veteran Norm Augustine, the committee came up with a list of possibilities and said in each case what NASA needs is about three billion dollars more a year to do something bold and audacious. That money isn't in this budget. So we checked in with Augustine committee member Leroy Chow to see what he thinks. Leroy Chow, good to have you with us on our special edition of This Week in Space. Um, as a member of the Augustine Commission, you were part of the group that, that looked at all the potential alternatives. One of the things that came through loud and clear was that there wasn't enough money to do anything truly bold or outside low Earth orbit, um, whichever course was taken. There's still not enough money in this Obama budget. Is that a disappointment? Well, it's, it's a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, you're right, Miles. The main message that we had uh, from the Augustine Committee was that uh, we are on an unsustainable trajectory and that more funding is required if we're going to have any kind of a robust uh, exploration program. So there's a very modest increase proposed for NASA, as we saw yesterday. 
uh, that's better, of course, than a cut, but uh, uh, it's disappointing that we won't have uh, more money committed to exploration. When you were talking uh, and you're doing your deliberations with the Augustine Committee, uh, and you were thinking about these, this so-called flexible, flexible path notion, which is essentially what the Obama administration has embraced, was this kind of like um, you know, you know, the, the worst case scenario in a sense that they embrace flexible path but don't fund it? That, that is a, a concern. Uh, of course, what we want to avoid or what we really stressed in our report that we should avoid, we as a nation, is what NASA has typically been asked to do, which is to do too much with not enough resources. So, uh, yes, in a way, it is a bit of a disappointment. Flexible path, of course, you can pay as you go. Uh, there may be things you can do, like bring in international partners to help contribute hardware and, and other uh, other assets. But you know, it's it's hard to tell without knowing more details on what the administration wants to do. Uh, just you know, just where we are. Well, and that's the thing. There there aren't a lot of details about what the destination may be, what the time frame might be, what the vehicle would be. That's a lot of things that are left pretty vague. And I think a lot of people get nervous when they see that kind of an, an approach. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, it's the uncertainty that gets people worried and uh, stressed out, and I can understand the uh, the mood that I feel out there in the uh, in the media and in you know people around NASA. It's it's hard. You know, it's difficult to say uh, what's going to happen. Now, the positive that I take away from this is that, like I said, there has not been a cut. In fact, there's been a modest, a very modest increase in the budget. Uh, so, you know, I take that as a positive. Uh, we're not gonna. I don't think we'll see a lot of job loss at NASA or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, that's that's the positive takeaway. We hear two kind of threads here. There, there are people who embrace the you know this notion of of a robust commercial space aid industry who say this is the dawn of a new era. And there are those who are wedded to Constellation and the way that uh, NASA has done business for 50 years who say this is the beginning of what has been described by Senator Shelby as a, as a death march toward the end of U.S. manned uh, space exploration. Which is it? Well, I, I think the commercial folks need uh, to be given a chance to succeed. And I am glad to see that there are provisions to, uh, to stimulate that. Now, what you know, the, the devil is in the details, of course. So, how do you implement that in a way that it has a high probability of success? Uh, those details need to be worked out. But um, I, for one, believe that the commercial uh, commercial industry has a possibility to exist. I want to stress on the Augustine Committee when we talked about commercial options, uh, we very much had in mind participation by the major aerospace companies. You know, we weren't, we were not saying, hey, let's take all this money, throw it over the fence to a few startup companies and see what happens. Uh, I've, you know, I've seen that out there in the, in the media in some reports, and that's simply not what we said. The fact is, these traditional aerospace companies have built every U.S. spacecraft, every manned spacecraft to date, and they clearly know how to do it. So there's got to be some kind of creative way to engage everyone in the commercial business and try to make a go of this. So is it possible in just slashing Constellation in toto, and in particular, people have talked about the Orion capsule. Why wasn't that preserved? Uh, in, in slashing it in toto, is that kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater? I, I'm not sure what's going on there. I frankly was surprised to see the Constellation totally get canceled. And unless, unless this is uh, kind of like in the Freedom Days, where Freedom was canceled, Space Station Freedom was canceled, and then a new program was born out of that. So we, that may be what we're seeing. I'm frankly surprised that Orion was uh, outright canceled, but it could be that Orion's going to res be resurrected under a different name uh, in the new program. So I think we have to wait and see as the details come out what we're dealing with. Leroy Chow, a friend of uh, our program this week in space, Space Fight Now. We'll see you at the launch, and thanks as always. Uh, good to be with you as always, Miles. Coming up on the program, we're going to hear from a Constellation supporter who believes the Obama plan is not a prescription for safety. The doctor, Doc Horowitz, is in the house. And a little later, Buzz Aldrin.